All right, so a quick video on analyzing circuits, which is such an important skill, but one that often isn't taught. Once you get this down, it's really straightforward and it'll simplify a lot of the questions that you have on the MCAT. So the first thing you do when you see a circuit like this is you have to figure out how you want to simplify the circuit. You always start with the smallest units first. And so what we see here is we have two resistors in series. That two resistor series is in parallel with another one. And then this whole setup is in series with uh, the original resistor. So remember when you add resistors in series, you just go uh, the equivalent resistor equals R1 plus R2. And so the equivalent resistance of this whole thing is going to be four. Now, the next step is to take this equivalent resistor. We can just kind of draw that in like that. And now we're treating it as one resistor that is in parallel with this other one. And so remember to add those, you go one over equivalent equals one over R1 plus one over R2. So you have one over four plus one over four, which equals two over four, or you could say one half. And so one over the equivalent resistor is equal to one over two. Therefore, the equivalent resistor for this whole area is two ohms. Following that, all that you have to do is now we have this resistor in series with this one, and you add those much like we did before. So you're adding two and two together again. And what we get for the entire circuit is an equivalent resistance of four. So what we did here is very important. The first thing is we started with the smallest unit, which was these two resistors in series, and we found an equivalent for those. Then we found an equivalent for this equivalent resistor in parallel with this one there. And that was where we added one over four plus one over four. And then finally, that allowed us to get that this whole region has a resistance of two ohms. And so then we simply add this in series with that to come up with our resistance for the entire circuit, which is going to be four ohms overall. So you simplify the circuit. Now the next thing you do is you realize a few things. First, that no matter what you do to the circuit, the voltage across a battery will always be the same and it will always be given unless they are specifically asking you to solve for what the battery's voltage is. They're usually going to be giving you the voltage of that battery. They'll say a four volt battery or an eight volt battery or something along those lines. From there, once you have the equivalent resistance and the voltage of the battery, you can simply find the current. And I think it's probably the most important step when you find that current, because once you find that current, then everything else comes together. So remember from a different video, we had that triangle, IRV is a VIP. You can also just remember it as Ohm's law, V equals IR. And uh, since we know the resistance is four, and we know that the voltage is 12, that means that uh, therefore the current must be three amps of current. And so we have three amps of current moving throughout the entire circuit. Once you get there, you're pretty much set for all the things you want to analyze. So when you find the equivalent resistance and you know the voltage, that allows you to then calculate the current by using V equals IR. The thing about current is once you have found it, then it is conserved throughout the entire circuit. Current isn't influenced by how many resistors it has to go through. Current enters a resistor and leaves a resistor at the same level. And so current will be conserved. If current has to go through a capacitor, the amount of current entering the capacitor will be the same as the current leaving the capacitor. If current uh, has to be split, for example, at a junction, let's say we went to this junction and we had to split our current, you'll have the same amount of current leaving as you will have entering. It might not leave evenly. It might be that our three amps of current turns into two and one, or it could be, as it actually is in this case, it could be turning into 1.5 going that way and 1.5 coming down this way. But the thing to realize is that the current that is exiting here will then be the same as the current entering this junction. The current entering this junction will be the same as the current leaving this junction, which will come over here 
return, and then exit this junction again. And so no matter what, we have three amps of current running through this entire circuit. And when you realize that current is conserved, it's conserved whether it has to pass through a battery or whether it has to pass through a resistor or a capacitor, then you're well on your way to understanding how these circuits operate. The only things that can change the current are considered in this formula, V equals IR. If we added additional resistors or something like that, what we would do is we would be changing the resistance of the entire circuit. And if you do that, if you leave the voltage the same but you change the resistance, that might end up changing this, the current. But then that means that the current running through that entire new circuit would, would be a different number, but it would be the same throughout it. It wouldn't change as it passed through any one resistor. It wouldn't change as it passed through the battery or any of the capacitors. So the most important step, I would say, is after you've figured out all of uh, the equivalent resistors or equivalent capacitors, is to figure out that current. As soon as you find out what the current is running through the circuit, then you're well on your way to answering any of the questions that you might have for this circuit.